started. Uh, so Phil is going to present and has asked um, that we hold any questions for afterwards. Um, so we will have some time to um, look at any Q&A after Phil's presentation. Feel free to pop any questions in the chat in the interim um, and then I'll make sure we cover those when we get to the, the time at the end for questions. Um, Phil, over to you. Thank you very much. Yes, my uh, my presentation is just reloading because it had a bit of a had a bit of a moment. So I'm just uh, loading up that now, um, and then we should be we should be away. Um, yeah. So uh, my name is Phil Davidson. I'm a senior learning designer, and I work within the track safety portfolio of uh, network rail training. Um, so I'm going to introduce someone else as well. Oh, I can see he's there because he's appearing on my camera. Um, yes. Young Mr. Young Mr. Laws, who you may know, Rob Laws, um, who's uh, currently seconded to to working alongside uh, us with track safety and safety programs and all that type of thing, but is uh, is a, a train delivery manager for at Walsall. So um, we've got plenty of experience, and uh, we've done some various work around cos research um, that we want to present to you. Now we've we've come we've come this way about uh, demonstrating it to you because historically and, and we're all about trying to learn some lessons from from uh, from the past so i've been working on track safety for about 12 months now and whenever bits and pieces have gone live we put out comms and and sometimes it's not descriptive enough and we launch these things and and we, we confuse you and sometimes end up confusing ourselves to boot so we thought we'll put these presentation sessions in, and as Mike says, you only need to come to one if you if you if you've booked on booked onto both. We just sent some invites out so you could pick which whichever one was best. Um, so we'll just go through a brief presentation with you just about what's changing. I'll give you some dates about when the materials are going to be available for you to look at, um, and we'll sort of go from there. And then at the end, we'll have some questions. Um, but this is all about briefing you just to set my story this is about briefing you about what's changing i'm not going in depth into the materials because we wouldn't have the time to do that uh, but you've got my contact now and and we can we can answer any questions as we go along so uh i don't think anybody can hear con constant beeps as people come in and out of the of the lobby there so uh apologies about that so um yeah apologies for my uh my presentation skills here using i'm using powerpoint live which is apparently what it wants me to do so uh, i'm i'm going to go for it and, and see how it goes so um the reason that we're here on, and what we're doing with this is pos research as you know is every two years what we now have is people redoing the same cos research that they did two years ago um so we've put in some additional elements to sort of replace them to sort of replace some elements so the course is not the same um and the whole scope from technical authority from network rail technical authority was we need to include more behavioral non-technical skills and human factors elements into this research so focusing on that more than the technical and i'll explain how we, we we're going to do that as, as as we go through now the approach that we've we've taken with this and and again learning the lessons from the past if somebody comes to me and says can you update and rewrite cos research we go yes of course what do you want to do well we want you to rewrite cos research so what we've done this time round is far more pragmatic and said, what can we as Training Solutions Network Rail Training handle? And what can you as trainers realistically handle around everything else you have to do in terms of delivery? Because it's minimal prep time. So we're doing small elements. And that's what you're going to start seeing from us now is small elements of change throughout the courses rather than trying to do wholesale, whole day changes. Because they're very difficult to embed they're very difficult to learn. They're very difficult to prep for. So that's the approach we're going with here. And you'll see where we're slotting those bits in as, as I go through um, the presentation. The other thing you're going to see as well is a starting to move away from these scripted training packs. OK, now I'm a trainer of 10 years. I wasn't a railway trainer. I've, I've come from outside 
railway-ish BTP, but not not full railway. Um, and the training packs we have in network rail track safety training are very scripted. They're very time orientated. You will spend X amount of time on this. You will spend X amount of time on that. We need to move away from that from a delivery perspective to enable you to create your own style, create your own flow. As long as the elements are covered, how you do it is entirely up to you in many instances. We're going to present you with tools and things that you can use. Um, but you need to get your own flows and, and all that type of thing. Spend as much time as you need on one point. You might need to spend a bit less time on another point because the class get it. Totally fine. Totally understand that. And that's the, that's where we're going with this now. Another thing we need to stop doing with this COS research is calling it a course. Um, I think many people will probably be in agreement with me on that one. We, we, we're causing confusion. I say we network rail training are causing confusion when we call this a course because people are coming along and I observed one recently down in Basingstoke. People come along expecting to be taught and they expect to be taught something prior to them taking their assessment and then they're shocked when they're just given their assessment. So we're going to stop calling it a course and we're going to start calling it an event It's a recertification event and we're going to utilize this event to start bringing in behavioral elements into it. Um, and we'll, we'll see, show you those exercises as we go through. So there's uh, two new exercises, one slight ses session move and everything else um, that will go ahead in the June 23 update will be around the toolkit feedback that's um, from October 22 to March 23. So any toolkit that was recorded against COS research has been implemented and it's currently going through with with Mike and Ensa on the team. So that's that's the ultimate elements that are going in there. Uh, one thing I will say about toolkit feedback is while I've got you all as a captive audience, toolkit feedback is looked at and it is actioned. Uh, unfortunately, the toolkit system doesn't enable us to respond to you. So when we put a response in, it doesn't come back more often than not. But we do do things with it. So we have a cut off in March ready to deal with June. So I would urge you to use the toolkit feedback because we do look at it and we don't ignore it. So if you find any problems, please put it on the toolkit feedback and then we can see it. OK, it's cause research for this one, obviously. OK. So some dates. What dates are we working to with this? So we're running two trainer briefings today and tomorrow, just for an hour, just to update you and sort of point you in the direction of where everything's going. The materials will be on the toolkit next Tuesday. OK, I'm waiting for a signature at the minute, a final signature for me to have the um, access then to, to put them on the toolkit. So they'll be there next Tuesday for you to start to review and prepare against. We're then putting in another session. And we haven't sent this one out yet, but on the 22nd of June, we're planning on running another session for everybody to bring any questions or anything they have as a result of reviewing the materials. OK, so just to clarify any points or anything like that. And we'll get we'll do exactly the same as we've done here with Mike. Mike will send out a meeting invite and you can all you can all accept and come. Now, the go live date for it is the 27th of June. Um, and we're lining that up as we try and do to review to minimise the number of um, versions. Um, it's uh, it will go out with the toolkit version update, so all the track safety courses go out at that time. Um, as you can see, we're giving you four weeks. Normally, with the toolkit feedback, we give you two weeks, but this is important that we give you more time to enable you to look at look at this stuff. Um, over and above the standard toolkit feedbacks or perhaps the rule book um, feedback that we uh, rule book bits that we need to do normally every twice a year. So what's changing first? So the first bit we had a look at was this title of COS research course, COS research event. What do we expect people to do before they come? And it leads us into our first non-technical skill our attitudes to learning. So people are turning up expecting to be taught and then they're disappointed when they're not taught. 
So how do we prepare people to come to the COSRESA event? Now, there's lots of different methods out there. And I'm showing you one here on the screen, which is a network rail based one, but I'm trying to get it opened up for everyone. So that's going through at the minute. So on our Moodle system, Network Rail Training's Moodle system, is a POS Reser document repository for revision purposes. So it's only been live for Network Rail Training. We're going to make it live for industry. Now, there'll be the standard Moodle cost and all that type of thing, but we're not mandating this. We're going to send out the comms through the Sentinel system to the sponsors to say, those who are coming on a COS research course, it is advisable to research the following headings. You can use the Network Rail Training Moodle site, you can use your own training revision tools, or you can just simply revise, you know, going through the web and, and all that type of thing. So within this site, we're pointing people towards these standards. OK, uh, historically, we've had the standards on there, but they get out of date every six months, don't they? So um, they are elements that we're asking people to look at and we're advising these and, and certainly through our joining instructions through Network Rail Training, they're going to go on there, but it's getting communicated out by the sponsors. So taking the owners away from you having to sort it out, the Sentinel sponsors will have this as a list that their, their people need to learn. And then there's some additional points there as well that they need to have a look at. And this all leads on to an exercise that we're bringing in as we as we start the classroom session. So what we're trying to do is link that attitudes to learning net non-technical skill by saying, right, we want you to revise before you come. And when you come, there's going to be an exercise that surrounds it. But this is not mandated. OK. So the next bit, the learning objectives. Now, I'm not sure how many of you have viewed the learning objectives of COS Research. The learning objectives were not learning objectives on there. They were statements, uh, sometimes copied straight from the competence. They weren't Bloom's taxonomy compliant, which is a standard that we have within Network Rail Training Solutions. So we've updated them in, in line with Bloom's taxonomy. We've aligned the learning objectives and the enabling objectives to the sessions correctly within the training pack because some they just didn't line up. Uh, within the presentation, because it's good practice in training, isn't it? We have now at the start of each session, the learning objective and the enabling objectives that support that learning objective at the beginning of each session. So you can refer to it at the beginning, this is what we're going to cover, and then you can refer back to it at the end of the session to say, this is what we've covered, any questions? So we're moving into that sort of that training arena. Um, there was also elements where as new exercises have been brought in, um, the access egress and trolley scenarios being the prime candidates last June, there was no supporting learning objectives or enabling objectives for those exercises. So where we've identified that we have brought in a learning objective or enabling objectives that support an existing learning objective to to cover those off. So they're there now and you'll see it as you go through the materials, how we've aligned it to the sessions. We're just trying to make it a lot more streamlined, a lot tidier to what it is. So before I go into the, the elements of the sessions that are changing, we're changing we're, we're changing the structure ever so slightly as well. Um, so the main element here when we talk about the structural changes is the movement of the knowledge assessment. Now, I appreciate it won't be. You know, it won't please everybody and I can't possibly please everybody with this, but there is a rationale behind it. It's not just we've not just done it on a whim. OK. So you can see on the timetable there. So that is actually a screen print straight from the training pack. First thing we've done is remove the uh, timings. OK, you spend as much time as you need to on the elements to get the points taught. That's the that's the first bit. OK. You can see that there's a couple of session changes. So session one has a new element in it, a revision session. OK, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, the second session is now 
Um, we're not looking at the rave reports. We're going to be doing a fitness for duty based exercise and we'll brief you on that as we go through here. Uh, session three there is remaining exactly the same. But what we've done is brought that session in front of the knowledge assessment. And the reason for that being is that with all the work we're now trying to do with bringing in the behavioural, the non-technical skill and the human factors elements, if you do the knowledge assessment, at, I think 11 o'clock it was, people are only going to get one element of the behavioural stuff we're trying to do. OK. By shifting the knowledge assessment to the end of the day, they are still going to get the behavioural elements before that time. And we're trying to bring in behavioural change with our causes. So they need to observe, they need to take those bits on board prior to doing the knowledge assessment. Preparation for the knowledge assessment will be done during session one in a way. But by moving the knowledge assessment, they also have then have their breaks and however you play your day to then look at, have a discuss with the, with the other delegates, with the trainer around some of the bits perhaps they're unsure of in preparation for doing their knowledge assessment. OK, so as I say, I don't expect it to be a, a resounding agreement from everybody. There'll be different experiences from different trainers, obviously, but we've piloted it and we've tested it um, and it and it worked. And um, so, yeah, we'll, we're, we're going to go with that for this time. OK. Day two hasn't been touched. We've not looked at day two other than tidy the training pack up and put in the learning and enabling objectives that support each session. Um, but day two is something we're going to be looking at for December, for the December update. So when that time comes, you'll get some more briefing sessions then. So the first session, first thing in the morning. Again, people run their days differently, but um, the, I, I went to observe a course in Basingstoke with this uh, with this new exercise and. The aim of this exercise is to replace the verification assessment. OK, so the verification assessment is no more. That's not an opportunity to send people home very first thing in the morning. What we want you to do is to run an exercise with them. It's an exercise that can be run whilst you're doing your prereq checks, if you wish. Some people start their prereq checks earlier. Some people do it whenever. So. What we want you to do is split the class into smaller groups or pairs, however you want to do it, depending on your class size. And there'll be three boards around the room. OK, um, and I'll show you the boards in a minute because I took photos of them when we piloted it. So we want one board to deal with the rule book um, and standards changes in the last two years. And we're providing on the pre learning access to the rule book. Uh, RSSB leaflets which detail the changes. So attitudes to learning, we're expecting people to actually keep up to date and not just wait for the two years so we can start to culturally change that as we go through. The next element then is the next board is knowledge gaps. So a group will move around each of the boards. Everybody gets to go on each board, write in all the different elements. So knowledge gaps, where do they have gaps in their knowledge that they would like to discuss? in preparation for their assessments. So they've come along and, and again, I'll show you a copy of the board in a minute, but where, where do we need to do some more work? And what is this going to enable you to do as trainers is tailor your delivery. So moving away from that scripted training pack, you shall cover, you shall, you can tailor it to how you want to do it. Okay. Then board number three, around best practice and lessons learned. So what's, what's going on well at, at your DU or, or whatever, and sharing bits and pieces. Also sharing anything learned from incidents that might have occurred in their areas. So if they're coming from different areas and, and they could learn to share and giving that, giving that sort of cross industry um, viewpoint, which deals with that bit that we're obviously, we're going to remove the RAID report element, which this is replacing. Um, so we can, talk about all that type of stuff there, far more relevant than road reports that were perhaps there two years ago. What's going on now in the railway that we can look at? What's best practice? What can we learn? All that type of thing. So how you run it is entirely up to you. 
you know, we use whiteboards and flip charts in the in the um, class that I observed. But how are you going to do it is entirely up to you. But it's it's all about giving you that autonomy there to explore what you want to cover within this research session in addition to the materials and sort of tailor your delivery around that. And that's a copy of the, the training pack. I just thought put that on there just so you can see what it's starting to look at. And you're going to start to see things like this. Suggested activity, small groups and flip charts. And then it will say training to cover the following points, things like that. Nothing, nothing too scripted. So I just took some pictures of the boards when when we ran the pilot. So um, unfortunately, it was quite bright in there. So some of the reflections on the screens are a bit much, but um, it was a couple of whiteboards and a flip chart in there. Um, and it was various bits and pieces that came up. And the one bit that I want to highlight to you is whether we use a presentation or whether we don't use the presentation. OK, so one bit that came up, I hope it should appear. The hierarchy. So the change in the hierarchy in 019 was discussed. But historically, the way that we deal with that is we whack a slide in the presentation, taking into very often not taking into account anything on timings to cover the hierarchy of 019. Now, what happened here was it was put on the what's changed in the last two years. So the trainer was able to deal with that at the time rather than clicking through the PowerPoint presentation to find the hierarchy. Now, we've left the slide in there. It's still there. And it's optional. You use it if that suits your delivery style. If you don't want to use it and you want to do it a different way, that is also entirely up to you. But the training pack reads cover the changes to the hierarchy and that's it. OK, so how you do it is up to you. So I thought I'd highlight that one there for you. Say this is where it came up in this course. The slide wasn't touched. It was all covered through conversation and that is fine. OK. Um, and there was other terms, you know, terms like red zone and all that things that's still coming up, which the trainer was able to box off. So it was it was a good it was a good session and it started getting people ready to think about their knowledge assessment later on in the day. OK, um, so just to cover it off, the verification assessment is no more that will disappear from the training pack. You can run this exercise whilst you're doing your prereq checks. OK. Um, or if you do your pre rec checks before the course starts, you can run and, and, and do it how you want to. But what you want to do is after it's run, time is to suit you. You then hold a session to cover off the points and get get the, the delegates talking about it. You know, what did you mean? All that type of thing. Um, and it worked really well. People were sharing. The trainer didn't have to do a lot of work, which is always the which is always a good thing. And the delegates were covering it off for each other. So that's session one covered. Session two. The so session two is that um, rave element removed. And we're inserting a video based exercise into here. Now, this is and I, I describe it as a the official term is a branching video, but the way I describe it is if you remember uh, as a child having a book where it says you read a passage, it says turn to page whatever to do this and turn to page whatever to do that. That's what this is like, except it's done through video form. Um, so officially called a branching video, you'll find the uh, videos within the presentation media folder. There's a there's another subfolder in there with this with these videos in. And the purpose of the exercise is that delegates alongside you as the trainer, so you'll facilitate it. Um, choose the route through the videos. to come to the correct conclusion. OK, now. There is obviously in training a clear, correct solution. But what we want to do is expand on it. This is where we're talking about the, the bringing in the non technical skills, sort of the sharing of information and all that type of thing. Because within this within this exercise, it is non technical based because we're talking about an individual's ability to carry out their role safely, distractions, all that type of thing. And it focuses around a site warden who is having issues at home. 
So we're not talking about the standard sort of things, fatigue and all that type of thing. We're talking around how does the cos slash pick deal with an individual who is having ongoing issues at home, all that type of thing, and how does that affect their ability to work? And how does the cos or pick have a discussion around that? How do they approach it? So this is where we're sort of focused. The site warden is merely just a, a conduit to go through it. It could relate to any railway role. It's just that this was the this was the person that was chosen. Now, there are technical inaccuracies in it as well, because we need some technical inaccuracies. Um, but historically, we as network rail training providing materials that are very technically focused, and we can teach technical stuff till the cows come home. But what we don't then talk about is some of the non-technical stuff that sits behind it. So you'll see that as you start to go through the materials. So when you have a look, run through the videos um, and you'll see how, how it all knits together. Um, so one of the key technical problems, you know, that the, the safe system of work actually isn't quite right. So how, how, do you, how are you going to deal with that, both from a technical and a non-technical perspective? Um, and that's a screenshot from the from the, uh, from the actual video. So the videos are laid out like that, um, and then they're covered off within a facilitator's guide. So this guide sits within the delivery information folder. It sits separate to the training pack because there's far too much in it. The key thing for this is this is a guide for you. It's a guide to ultimately get you started off. So there's some delivery notes at the top. And what, one thing I observed when I, I watched it in the pilot was if you've got to set the scene out really well about what you want them to do. So really set those ground rules, because if you don't, things start to get missed and it starts to wander off and it's like, well, what are we doing? So I've put those in the delivery notes at the top. Then for each of the discussion points, there's a table which covers off the non-technical skills that are relevant to that particular scene alongside some questions that you could ask or you could use to tailor the conversation in the group. Okay. Don't have to use those questions. They're just there as the person who wrote it. This is what we were trying to get at. So use them and, and ultimately you're going to build your own flow around it. But don't expect that anybody who delivered this first time around will get it absolutely spot on perfect. It's going to take two, three, four goes for you to get your flow and and see how you and how you want to approach it and how you run it so do bear that in mind when you're looking at it okay uh, and as I, I think i said before it, it's obvious what the correct route is the bloke's not fit for duty so we can we can have that conversation very very quickly what we're looking at here is, OK, well, how do you approach that conversation? What do you say to that person? And people were bringing anecdotal evidence that the other delegates were talking about it. So there was people from different departments and things talking about how they would deal with this differently. You can also include in this the WorkSafe procedure and talk about that as well. And there's a clear indication that links it to the WorkSafe procedure. So is it enacted properly? Is it? all that type of thing, and you'll see that when you go through the materials. OK, so the next bit then, so this is the, the last change to the actual materials. Within the existing course, the briefing element during the teach phase is stand up and everybody delivers a briefing. So in theory, briefing number one could be OK. But by the time we got to briefing number six, seven, eight, it should be perfect because they've all heard each other's briefings. So we thought, well, how are we going to do this different? So uh, we have a video available, the same as the, the other video. It was it was produced for, for another project, for the, the PIC project. Um, but it fits very, very nicely in here. Now, this video, again, is available in the presentation uh, media section of the of the course materials and the idea of this video is instead of watching each other let's critique a standard briefing now the title of the briefing not that we want you to use it in front of the delegates is that it's good but it's not perfect okay 
So there's some, there is some issues with it, but it's good. And in fact, one of the causes that when we when we filmed it said that's one of the best briefings I've seen, which was perhaps alarming, but we'll we'll see. Um, so it's what we want you to do with these with this is again you've got to set the scene about what you want them to do with it, because if that's missed, it doesn't flow as well. It works, but it doesn't flow as well. So what we want you to do is uh, split them into groups. They can all watch the video together. And then in the smaller groups, once they've watched the video, there's some key points we want to cover. Now, again, historically, we focus on the technical elements of a briefing. Is this covered? Is that covered? Is that covered? Is that covered? What we want to do this time, alongside those elements, because there are some technical inaccuracies in there, and they were put in there on purpose, is how is it delivered? Is it clear? How's the questioning? What's the tone of voice like? What's the confidence like? And there's some key points. There's about five or six points. So we want the delegates to critique this against. And then have an open discussion. So once the once the groups have done their work, each group to share with the other group. Or in pairs, if you want to run it that way again, entirely up to you. And share amongst themselves what they thought and different people pull different things. So there'll be people who are very technically minded who will instantly pull out that they got the line speed wrong and then corrected themselves. And then the lady who, who answers the question gets the question wrong because she wasn't listening the first time out. There'll be those there'll be those elements, but there'll also be people. And there was there was people in, in my pilot group who picked out on how we how we addressed it. How we how we addressed any uh, issues with the group. What did he do with the sentinel swiping? All that type of thing. So it's all there. It's just waiting to be expanded on through conversation. That's essentially it. OK, so within both exercises that I've shown you there, you're going to hear the term pick. OK, now pick is being redefined within the, the latest version of 019, the simplified version. But any cause can be a pick. So if people are picking up on the term pick, it gives you another teaching point to talk about. But the term cause pick is interchangeable within these exercises. OK. Um, but the absolute key to this is setting the scene about what you want them to do and giving them the criteria that you want them to to judge it against. OK. Now, that's uh, an extract from the um, facilitator's guide. Again, that's not in the training pack because it's too big. Um, but we've got the five points there that we want them to cover off. There's also then all the bits and pieces that then assist you with fielding the questions or answering the questions and things like that. What, you, what we've seen historically with these courses is when we talk about, you know, the, the theory of good communication, what you end up is slides with a theory of good communication on them. Whereas actually, if we have this video and you open it up through discussion, you're going to cover exactly the same points, minus 20 PowerPoint slides. It's far more engaging, far more fun for the trainers. The delegates are going to do all the work. So it's excellent stuff. So I'm just highlighting there that the you can see there it says safe work pack briefing. OK, so it's sitting there. That's what it always said. It always said briefing, but we've just put safe work pack briefing, and then it relates to that exercise that we've just discussed there. OK, so that's a whistle stop tour. So just to clarify. Three exercises are being changed. They're all in day one. OK. We've not touched day two. And we're moving the knowledge assessment to the end of day one to enable people the opportunity to have a go at the fit for duty exercise, to have a look at the safe work pack briefing, because if we send them away at lunchtime, let's face it, they're not going back to work, are they? So they might as well have a whole day's training as they're there to prepare them for whatever comes next for them. So any questions? I think we'll have to, we'll have to ask Mike to, to field the questions with their hands up and things like that. I'll do my best to answer what I can. And what I can't answer, I'll come back to you on if you if we take names and things like that. 
Thank um, you very much for that, um, Phil. So no one put any questions in the chat um, whilst you were delivering. Um, so the floor is open if anyone wants to raise hand and ask a question. I shall try and compare. If I stunned everyone into silence. Either that, Phil, or you've done such a good job of explaining that you've answered everyone's questions. I've, I've tried. Here we are, Dorna. Here we are, Dorna. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I've just got a couple of things. Um, relative to the and prerequisites, the prerequisites have to be confirmed to be in place before any training starts. So there really wouldn't be an opportunity to be checking and prerequisites while learners are actually doing exercises. Um, terribly, terribly minor point. The timetable for day two actually had course closure. Um, it may be better just to change the word course to event if it's going to be um, an event. Um, good, going good spot, Donna. Sorry. Good spot. I've done enough control Fs trying to find course and replace it with event. So yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, I have no issue at all with the um, behavioural elements being in there. They they certainly are welcome. The there is one thing, however, um, there is a huge amount of flexibility there for the trainer or a WDS for the uh, delivery of the sessions. And and as I say, the non-technical stuff is incredibly welcome. There are technical elements that still need to be covered. Now, for um, our NSAR visits and, and observations, with this degree of flexibility, um, is you know for for the NSAR observers coming in to observe, I'm quite sure they they would have their own personal preference as to what they want to see and how things are done, and um, and it doesn't make me worried at all because um, you know I'm, I've I've no issues at all with how I deliver things, but there potentially could be confusion for everyone if they are going to be observed if there's this amount of flexibility relative relative to the delivery of a course research event as to what's covered what isn't covered you know with that amount of flexibility there right so that's that's we've we've boxed that off by putting in the trainer must cover the following points where it's applicable so as long as the trainer cover those points again it doesn't matter and we've run this we've we've had discussions with NSAR about this so there's no issue with this the other thing is the presence of the learning objectives at the beginning of each session is that you have we have something to measure against there and it's far more measurable than it ever has been because they've not been there. So if you, if if I was trying to observe against the the old learning objectives, I would really struggle because the words in there just weren't weren't suitable to assess against. Um, so that's that bit all fine. So there's no issue with that. So it's the start. So we've given you the tools there to do it. And as more courses start to get looked at, you're going to see it more and more start to appear to move away from that scripted element to give you a bit more autonomy on that. Um, so around the, the prereqs bit, it's not been raised before. We're not really doing any teaching. They're going off to do their exercise to work out to link their pre-learning into their course. We'll see how it goes. Ultimately, we're going to run with it. It's been piloted and it works, so we'll, we're going to run with it. If the feedback comes back that something doesn't work, then it's 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 not the equivalent of you telling me my baby's ugly. You know, it's it's really not a problem. We we'll come back and we can revisit it because the aim of this this is to is to develop it over time. So by December there'll be something else new. June 24 there's something else new. So nobody ever comes. And does the same course, and there's a there's a there's a plan around that. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, Dawn. Well, thanks very much for spotting the the course bit. I I, I thought I've spent so long trying to change all those courses to events and things that uh, I was bound to miss one. So that was a really good spot. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thanks, Phil. Um, Stuart Richardson. Stuart, I've got a hand up there. Are you still? 
Sorry, my mic was in silent. <laughs> uh, it says on your boards, you have to mention in board two about your knowledge gaps with individuals. Yes. What are we going to do if an individual says, my knowledge gap, I don't know anything about anything apart from taking a line blockage with detonators? Bastard. Stuart, good to see you. Um, yeah. Probably shouldn't be this. <laughs> <laughs> In the nicest possible sense. Um, you know, ultimately, you can only do so much if, yeah. they've, if they've come completely. And that's why we're saying, look at the rule books, look at the standards. So if they come completely unprepared, they're going to fail their knowledge assessment and they're going home at the end of day one, aren't yes. they? And that's essentially it. No yeah. no change, really. Because mm -hmm. if they turn, there's, there's never been the opportunity, nor was it the scope to teach in COS Reset. Yeah, yeah, um, get that. So, yeah. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard about modularizing and all that type of thing. We're a long way off that yet. Mm -hmm. So we've got to run with what we've got. So the thing's still written to the same 021 competent spec that's there. So... Yeah, we just will continue and do our best, but ultimately, mainly, it's we're 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 trying to help that point by saying to people, and the joint instructors for network rail training are going to say, do not come expect to be t being taught, because that's not what you're coming. You're coming to be re-certified, reassessed. So we'll try and we'll try and do a bit of a cultural change, be a mm -hmm. bit slower though, Stuart, unfortunately. Yeah. OK, thank you for that. Um, we have a question that was put in the chat, um, but I think actually the person who was involved in the pilot has, has has answered that question. So Sylvia asks, on the pilots, how did the timings go? Will the event duration, well done in calling it an event, um, sure. be the same duration as, as current? And uh, Daniel has said that it did run to the timing, so the plan was was accurate. That was that was essentially what we were we were testing. We knew the materials were OK because they've been tested through the PIC proof of concept. So we knew that they worked um, and they worked with experienced people. Um, the main point of the pilot was if we take that exercise out of there and put that one in, does it still run to time? And uh, and yet yeah, Dan was our was our excellent pilot trainer. I didn't know he was there. Apologies, Dan. Um, yeah. And it, and it did. It ran spot on. So. Lovely. Thank you for that. Um, Dawn. Lovely. Thanks, Phil. Um, a bit of a question for me, really, in terms of now that we're calling it an event and we're asking to the trainers to obviously assess the knowledge rather than train them, mm -hmm. will there be an alert that goes out to the industry as a whole? So anyone holding COS now um, for the sponsors that they're, they've kind of got a pre-warning that this is going to change rather than get into a classroom and expect to be uh, trained and assessed. Yes, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a final signature, and then there'll be some comms going out. So I've not done comms for for you guys this time on the toolkit and pushing it out that way because we're going to run these sessions and make it because this is far better, I think, than the the standard. But we're going to put some some comms out via the Sentinel. I'll send I'll send it to the Sentinel sponsors' email address, and then they'll do what they do. Um, so it will go out to the sponsors to say, this is what you're coming to do. So it's a it's a bit of a spill saying you're going to come. You're not here to be retaught. Hopefully they probably got the message last time, but there were still people who turned up on the pilot course who were expecting to be taught. Um, so we'll go through the Sentinel sponsors to make sure that their their guys and girls are ready to come to their course. Here's the list of what we think you should be covering before you go, because that's ultimately what we're going to cover in that first uh, session. And, uh, and and go with it from there. It's going to be a slow burn, I think. I don't think I'm expecting a an overnight transformation where everybody comes prepared but it certainly starts setting the expectations out for not only this but all the other courses that we're looking at as well thank you no worries thanks phil um stuart richardson is this a, a, an additional question yes it is. i've been I've, yes it is. i've been I'm asked charge to ask you by questions joe I'm... <laughs> sorry you can charge this one to someone else <laughs> <laughs> i've been asked to ask a question on behalf of a colleague trevor platts uh, why are we not using the the Sentinel uh, electronic logbook when we're doing the prereqs for to record the use of competencies? Because this is a big issue when the, the candidates come in and we've got to check all the packs or we've got to go to the rail hub and check packs. That does take a lot of time. To be honest with you, Stuart, I have no idea. I'll go to the technical authority and ask for you. Right, thank you. No worries. OK, uh, any more? 
don't worry if you haven't got a question now. What we'll, what we'll do is we'll um, give you time to look at the materials, obviously, and then we're going to put that other session in towards the end of June to to answer any other any problems off. Um, but yeah, anything in the meantime, I'm sure I can speak. But if you go go to Mike or anything, if anything crops up in the meantime or there's something you spot, just let Mike know, and then and then I'll, he'll let me know. Uh, yeah, of course, no problems at all. Uh, I think this chat should remain open as well. Um, so if anyone does have any uh, access to the chat afterwards, um, you can you can pop the questions in there as well. Uh, oh, someone has just put a, a message into the chat. Let me just get. That. I've just seen it. Has the Cos Research Workbook removed? Absolutely. Yes, that's, that's gone. been gone for some time, uh, but it's still in the it's still in the folder. So yeah, the Cos Research gone. It is no more alongside the verification assessment. OK, uh, unless anyone has any um, further questions, um, I'll say thank you very much to Phil. And allow you all to go and get some lunch. Thanks very hey. much for, for coming, everyone. Thanks a lot. All. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Thank you.